Phospholipids, the tadpole looking lipid molecules, with their little round heads and long underdeveloped tails. Oh, get your mind out of the gutter. Tadpoles, people, tadpoles. Well, actually, phospholipids, but anyway. Why are these funny looking molecules so important to us? And what exactly do they look like? Well, in this video, we will answer those questions and more. So let's talk about phospholipids. Phospholipids, much like the name suggests, are lipid molecules, a subgroup of lipids, in fact. Lipids, including phospholipids, are soluble in nonpolar solvents, but are resistant to water. You know, when you try to mix water and oil. Yeah, they don't like each other and never mix. As we mentioned before, while your head was in the gutter, they do somewhat resemble a tadpole with a distinct head and two tails. The head of the phospholipid molecule is a hydrophilic or water-loving phosphate group. And the two tails are hydrophobic or water-hating fatty acid chains. Phosphate groups are made up of a central phosphorus molecule surrounded by four oxygen molecules. And fatty acid chains are made up of hydrogen and carbon molecules. When you use a glycerol molecule as a backbone, combining the phosphate group with two fatty acid chains and voila! you've got a phospholipid. Now let's go through the types of phospholipids. There are two main types of phospholipids based on the type of backbone they have. Glycerophospholipids, where the backbone is made of glycerol as we talked about earlier, and sphingophospholipids, where the glycerol backbone is replaced by long-chain sphingosine. The hydrophilic phosphate group can also determine the type of phospholipid. If the molecule is bound to hydrogen, you've got a phosphatidic acid. Bound to choline, you've got a phosphatidylcholine. You've also got a phosphatidylethanolamine, cardiolipin, phosphatidoniazotol, and all these others that I'm listing on the screen, which are a mouthful. They're actually great names to give your ex, a reminder of how annoying they were. Okay, so hydrophilic head, hydrophobic tails, and a ton of different types of phospholipids, but what do they all do? The main thing that phospholipids do is act as a primary component of cell membranes. Phospholipids put their heads together literally on the outside of the cell, with their double tails together towards the inside. Another layer of phospholipids forming facing the opposite way, creating a double-walled membrane, officially known as a lipid bilayer. This bilayer assembly happens automatically because of the hydrophilic and hydrophobic properties of the phospholipids. This is what we call being amphipatic and it causes phospholipid self-assembly. Cells need membranes to exist, and we need cells to, well, to be who we are. So now our funny-looking friends are not so funny-looking anymore, right? Well, they still are, but you get the point. Phospholipids, in addition to giving the cell membrane its characteristic bilayer structure, also give the membrane something called selective permeability. Selective permeability is pretty much what it sounds like. Phospholipids select what they allow to go through the cell membrane. Phospholipids also help regulate processes to promote cell survival and growth, lubricate joints and alveoli, and circulate lipoproteins. Talk about some busy tadpoles. We've learned that phospholipids are key components of cell membranes. Time for us to take a moment and dive deeper into the world of cell membranes. Click on the video on your screen to continue this journey. Like the video to let us know you want more of these and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next upload. I will see you in the next one.